Hey viewers, welcome back to this YouTube channel Meet Academia and this is Hamza Meet. Our today's video is mainly related with the third chapter of geography that is water resources. So before we start, let's see that what are the contents that we are going to see in the upcoming slides. Well viewers, here we have the very first slide right there on the screen that is hydrological cycle. We also called it as the water cycle. So let's see which features that we have related with the water cycle. The first one over here we have is evaporation. When we talk about evaporation, it is basically the process of turning liquid into vapors. That is the very first feature that we have related with the water cycle in which whenever the water body get heated by the solar radiation the liquid basically turned into vapors that is the first thing evaporation the second one we have over here is transpiration so when we talk about the transpiration it is basically when water evaporates from leaves from stems or either from flowers or plants rather from the water body the process is the same but this one is called as transpiration plants basically lose more than 90 percent of their water through transpiration as you could see that in the video the transpiration occurs from the plants from the leaves and eventually it leading towards the precipitation which is a rainfall the third one over here is evapotranspiration. So when we talk about evapotranspiration, it is basically the combination or the collection of both evaporation and transpiration, which means that whenever there will be any kind of an evaporation from both water body as well as from the plants, it collectively called as evapotranspiration. The fourth content of the feature of the water cycle is the condensation. So when we talk about the condensation, when water vapors becomes liquid, it is basically a reverse process of evaporation. It usually happens in one or two ways. One of them could be that when air is cooled down to its dew point. When we see the evaporation occurs, the water vapor rises. When it reaches to a level which is a temperature inversion layer, which we could see or say that it is a layer where the temperature is basically leached. There the vapors condense to form clouds. The formation of these clouds is called as condensation. The next one we have is interception. Here you could see that in the picture but let me clarify the definition first. Precipitation that does not reach to the soil that precipitation could be in the form of rainfall or a snowfall. Whenever it does not reach to the soil but rather intercepted by the leaves, branches of plants and forest floor, that is called as interception. Mainly it occurs in a canopy. Here you could see that in the picture that there is a tree, a precipitation occurs and instead of falling directly to the ground, there is some water which has been intercepted by the leaves or the branches of the plants or later on the forest floor which is not completely reached towards the ground. So this process is called as interception. Next one is surface runoff. Well, when we talk about the definition of surface runoff, it means the movement of water across the soil surface towards stream channels instead of infiltrating. So what is the meaning of infiltrating? We will see that in the next content but let me clarify. Infiltration means the seepage of water. Here you could see clearly into the picture that all the processes are basically going on. Evaporation occurs later on condensation which is the formation of clouds, later precipitation which can be either in the form of rain or snowfall and when the water is basically moving towards the stream channel instead of infiltrating that process or the movement across the soil is called as surface runoff. Next feature is infiltration. As I discussed before in the surface runoff, 
then water when it seeps into the ground it is a seepage of water into the soil whenever the water comes onto the soil either by the rainfall or by the melting of glaciers the water that penetrates into the soil or seep underground is called as infiltration mainly it is a seepage of water as you could see clearly in the picture well here is a complete process of water cycle in one little video in which you could see all the process going on in one go the precipitation condensation evaporation transpiration or either evapotranspiration everything could be seen in one little video over here which could clear the concept that we have already studied in the previous content well viewers here we have our second slide related to the water sources which is groundwater so before we start related to the content of the groundwater let's see what exactly is the definition of the groundwater is when we talk about what exactly the groundwater is it means that the water present beneath earth surface which mainly exist in rocks and soil pores so when we talk about the pores it means that we are talking about the holes which allows the water to penetrate so this is what exactly is the definition of the groundwater so let's see that what exactly the content we have the first one is the seasonal and the regional fluctuations so as we know that whenever we discuss about geography we talk about pakistan only there are certain kind of seasons which exist in pakistan like summers winters monsoon autumn spring etc over here we will talk about two things which mainly is interlinked with the groundwater the first season that we are going to discuss over here is the season of monsoon so whenever we have a monsoon season as we know that there is a very high kind of a rainfall in monsoon season which mainly occurs in summer a high rainfall which leads eventually towards the floods so whenever there will be floods eventually you will get more water which will infiltrate into the ground and the ground water level rises the second thing would be again in the season of summers that is the melting of snow or the glaciers so whenever there will be a melting of glaciers eventually it would also lead towards a flood and it would allow you to have more water to infiltrate to give more underground water so ground water level rises so there are certain kinds of fluctuations in certain seasons you might not get water for example in winters there is not much rainfall so the ground water will not that much increases this is the first thing that we have over here the second one is high in rainy season as we have already discussed over here related to the monsoon so that is the same example that there will be more ground water availability in the time of a high rainy seasons and even we know that the rainfall they are variable they fluctuate as well we will discuss that in the upcoming slide as well related with the fluctuations of the rainfall next thing is easier to obtain at full hills through tube wells and curries it means that whenever we need to obtain or to utilize the ground water we can do that from certain means it could be a tube well as you could see over here in the picture the second one is curries so whenever we talk about curries curries is something which is basically the underground water channel from where we dig up the water and bring it on to the surface as you could see over here in this picture the people are digging up the surface mainly they are created these vertical shafts these are basically the shafts 
I'm not going to go in detail regarding the curries over here. We will discuss curries in detail in a later topic when we will discuss about the conventional or the modern methods of irrigation. Moving towards the next content we have over here is lower water table in desert. Now we know that the lower water table in desert is mainly due to the low rainfall. And because the deserts are above aquifer. So this is a new word that you might have heard aquifers what exactly the aquifers is all about groundwater obviously would be low in deserts because of the scanty rainfall but you need to understand what aquifers are all about so here we have a little picture related with the aquifer before i start this let me clear a definition of aquifers well aquifers is basically a body of rocks and sediments that holds the groundwater. Where exactly the groundwater exists? This is the definition of aquifer. I am repeating it again, it's a body of rocks or sediments that holds the groundwater. Coming back towards the picture, here you could see that one or two water bodies that are existing between this confining bed, which is obviously a rock or a sediment. You could see two names over here, unconfined aquifer and the second one is confined aquifer. So let me give you the examples of these in short the definition of both to recognize that what is exactly is the difference between the two when we talk about the unconfined aquifer the first one it means the free connection upwards to surface which means that there is no rock or hard kind of a hurdle in between if it is over here where it is existing at this place it is easier to obtain the groundwater when we talk about the second one the confined aquifer it is related with isolation means isolated from surface we could see that in the picture as I could show you again over here that this confined aquifer is basically existing between the two rock bed, the confined beds, which are the two rock pieces or maybe the sediments. So it is not easier to obtain the confined aquifer. Moving for forward related with the groundwater, another one point that we could add over here is that the groundwater is useful where canal irrigation is not possible and or either the rain is scanty or variable. When we talk about the rain to be variable, we know that rain varies. It is not the same everywhere or maybe there might be a shortage of rainfall. There are certain places where the water shortage exists. So on those places, we can utilize these groundwater and can do canal irrigation which can help us eventually towards agriculture. The groundwater can either be sweet or slime means salty. Here I would give you one example related with the water logging and salinity. We have already discussed this topic earlier in a previous video in which I have talked about the water logging and salinity in detail. So as we know that either the water is a saline one or sweet one. If it is saline and it comes onto the surface with the groundwater, the salt content would also be there onto the surface. Later on when evaporation occurs, the thing that left behind is salt which can eventually damage the fertile or the fertility of the soil. So the groundwater can either be sweet or either be slime.
The last thing that is contaminated water near industrial cities, which means water pollution. So the groundwater, if it existing near to any industry, the water might be contaminated because of the industries existing over there. The perfect example from Pakistan would be the city of Karachi, which is an industrial area. So there is more chances on that place related with the underground water or the groundwater to be more contaminated because of the pollution. Well viewers, this is it for our today's video. I will come up with the second part of our water resources with the remaining content of it inshallah in the next video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please kindly do subscribe it and do like it as well. For next time, until then, take care of yourself with office.